I was absolutely fascinated by the potter's wheel. It drew me into it. I'm not really sure I knew what I was going to do with it, but it was very physical. It was very fast. You could create a three-dimensional object faster than you could draw it with a pencil. It's not the old craft thing of just working with your hands, but I think it's the actual creation of things. So it's a little bit design and the making of and the incorporation into. I guess primarily I'm a potter. I make dishes. I make plates and cups and bowls and, and vessels and things like that. I work with very traditional materials. Clay's been around forever, probably the first material that was ever used. One of the really interesting things about Majolica style work is that you can see every brush mark and a lot of ceramics the the colors tend to move and melt and sort of flow into each other but Majolica the color just sits on the surface so every mark you make is visible. People always ask me what do you do when you make a mistake? <laughs> you really can't go back so whatever is down there is what you're going to end up with. I read a lot of speculative fiction. I suppose in the old days they used to call it cheap science fiction. <laughs> Robots and spaceships and, and that kind of thing. I'm not really sure why I like that stuff. And my work is sort of about that a little bit. It's about, you know, we surround ourselves with technology and machines. And most of the new ones we really don't understand. They're practically magic. The older machines were things that you could understand. They were mechanical, they were analog. You could take them apart and put them back together. And so I look at that kind of stuff a lot, and it really does influence a lot of the things that I do. My work has been called eclectic, sometimes not in a nice way. <laughs> I once sent a group of work to a gallery in Detroit. I was really proud of them. And again, I like to work on a lot of different things. The gallery director sent some of the work back along with a note that says, this looks like the work of three or four different people and I can't show it together as the work of one person. <laughs> that really made me think for a while. At the same time, I learned that when I was a full-time studio person that the only way that you could be happy in studio was to deliberately incorporate change into your work. And that was the only thing that made full-time studio work really viable, that otherwise you would just stagnate and burn out. And I saw a lot of people that did that. They were commercially very successful, but they were so bored by what they were doing that for them working looked like it was painful. I also teach at the Cleveland Institute of Art, and I've taught ceramics there for the last 31 years. By working at CIA, my work has really gotten more diverse. When you teach, you have to know a lot of stuff, and the students, of course, always want to know about something that you're absolutely ignorant of. And you have to learn that or participate in it or figure out how to work it in, so it's a little bit like going to school. <laughs> Being a member of what I would call a traditional craft community, I think the Arts Prize really affected me because it's not a community that I feel gets the recognition that it should. So for me, being included with all those other really wonderful, really talented people who, who won that prize made me feel like I was part of a much larger community.